May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In today's Gospel, we heard Jesus quoting from the 118th Psalm. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Not being an architect, I turned to that fount of knowledge, Wikipedia, to shed more light on cornerstones. A cornerstone is also known as the foundation stone, or the setting stone. It's the first stone to be set in the construction of a masonry foundation. The position, solidity, and soundness of the entire structure rests on this cornerstone, since all the other stones are, are set in reference to them. These days, a cornerstone is a more ceremonial component of a building something to write the date on or put a time capsule underneath. But its original purpose was essential. Without a proper cornerstone, the building would never be right. Jesus used the metaphor of the cornerstone as the foundation of one's right relationship with God and with all creation. He admonished the leaders of the people who had lost sight of that foundation and were acting as though they owed nothing to God. They had allowed the power and resources at their disposal to warp their perspective and pervert their estimation of their place in society. They thought they were not only entitled to everything that had been placed in their care, they wanted more, and they wanted it all for themselves. Jesus called them out on this in the parable of the wicked tenants, exposing their greed, callousness, and violence towards those who sought to correct them. Jesus warned them about that cornerstone, saying, the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. Paul of Tarsus found out about that true cornerstone of faith in his encounter with Jesus. While he was still known as Saul, he was more than satisfied with himself. After all, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe that produced most of the significant leaders. And he was a Pharisee, the sect that prided itself on a rigorous interpretation of the law. Paul considered himself blameless under the law. He had followed every commandment since the time of his circumcision, right on schedule on the eighth day of his life. He felt that his zeal and fervor for religion could not be matched by anyone. But when he stumbled into Jesus, Paul's image of himself was shattered. Looking at the reflection of his life that he saw in Christ, he saw that it was rubbish, built on false premises and empty of true righteousness. We have been shattered this week by the violence of a gunman in Las Vegas who opened fire with military-style weapons on a crowd of concert-goers, leaving behind 58 dead and 489 wounded. We're devastated by the enormity of this loss of life and the trauma inflicted upon all who were there and all the first responders and all who are grieving their loved ones. 
and were crushed and discouraged because in the horror of this event, we can see reflected our failure to protect and care for one another. Any illusions we might have had about our righteousness or superiority among the nations have been broken to pieces, as even conversation about gun control is once again being silenced. One pundit went as far as saying that mass shootings are the price we pay for freedom. Events like this are bringing us face to face with the consequences of the materialism, individualism, and cutthroat competition upon which so much of society is built. We've come to believe in the myth of redemptive violence the notion that there can be such a thing as a war to end all wars, or a good guy with a gun who will save us. We have in place a cornerstone that is compromising our very lives. If violence is the cost of continuing with the way things have always been, we need to seriously ask ourselves, is this what God intended for us? Is this the life we want to live? Paul confronted these questions in his own life and determined that he needed a new foundation. He realized that following the letter of the law was never going to be enough. He needed the law to be written on his heart. He wanted to be transformed by Christ and obtained, obtained a righteousness that is the right perspective on life that comes from God. Paul's life was changed completely after his encounter with Jesus. He learned from the disciples he had once persecuted. He preached and taught at great risk to himself and wrote letters of encouragement from prison to those he had discipled in the faith. We need this kind of conversion today. We need to be healed of our violence and build on a more secure foundation. And I'm not recommending a theocracy and religious law. No, this conversion must begin with ourselves, spread person to person and heart to heart. It's time to lay down a solid cornerstone for our lives upon which a new future can be built. A future where we love God and neighbor as ourselves. A future in which the resources that God has given are shared, replenished, and cared for in a sustainable way so that generations to come will have the things that they need. This is the future prophet uh, promised through the prophet Isaiah. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The cornerstone and foundation of Jesus is the beginning of the kingdom of God, the beloved community of God. It is Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who can save us and heal us from this madness. Let us turn to God in prayer and ask. No, beg, beg that the love of Christ be planted firmly in our hearts, that we might be guided to right living all our days. Amen.